Please welcome the speaker. Thank you for the introduction. And thanks to the organizers for inviting me on this excellent conference. The presentation that I prepared together with my colleagues of Philips Research will focus on in-plane electrophoretic e-paper. And my intention is to convince you that for true paper-like optical appearance, in-plane electrophoretic is the best suited e-paper technology. Let's start with e-paper applications. 2009 promises to be an exciting year for e-books. There are several different e-book readers on the market and especially the Kindle appears to be selling in high numbers. So e-books are booming. However, my message is that there is an e-paper market beyond e-readers. If you look at the total market for printed paper, then currently that is estimated at an astronomical 1400 billion US dollars. And only a fraction of this, namely 60 billion, is estimated for the combination of books, magazines and newspapers. And even in the most optimistic scenario, it is expected that in the coming 10 years, 6 billion will be replaced with electronic readers. Now, a bigger part of the total market is in signage. Now, think about all the printed advertisements in stores and public places. This is a huge market. And moreover, we believe that a large fraction may be replaced with e-paper. Now, currently, shop owners have to manually update these signs regularly. So if a technology could allow for automatic updates, it would save them a lot of work. So shop owners, but, but also the brand owners, they really want such an e-paper technology. If and if it is affordable, if it doesn't require a power plug, and if it looks as good as printed paper. So under those conditions, there will be a great market opportunity for e-paper. And we believe that in-plane electrophoretics is the ideal technology for that e-signage application. So let me explain how the technology works. Essentially, it's really simple. You start with an oil, you add ordinary pigment particles, and you charge the particles with a surfactant. Then you make a device consisting of a substrate, electrodes, you add the suspension, and you top it with a sealing layer. So in the absence of an electric field, the pigment particles will be uniformly spread over the area of the device, and light will be maximally absorbed. However, when you apply a small voltage between the electrodes, say 5 volts, then the charged particles will be uh, removed towards the attracting electrode. And um, as you can see, this, this transition is not a video speed. It takes a few seconds. But then the majority of the device will become transparent. And I mean really transparent, because the particles, they compact into only 10% of the area. And of the remaining 90%, most of that area, there are no electrodes. It's just solvent and substrate. So it's ultimately transparent. And here you see the measured values of that transparency. So in the compacted state, um, the absolute transmission of this device, it reaches 80%. And I should say, these measurements are absolute transmission measurements over a larger area of the device, so in, uh, including multiple pixels. And for the spread state, you can see that um, at the wavelength of magenta peak absorption, the transmission is only 10%. So this is a highly effective light modulator. And this absolute transmission, it's affected by several contributions. And with help of a simple model, which I explain in the paper, it's possible to separate these contributions. And um, for instance, here you see that the contribution of the solvent um, is very highly transparent. So more than 90%. And you see that the transmission through the particles uh, has this shape. And to compare that with, we uh, measure the transmission through a layer of magenta toner from a conventional laser printer. And it proves that our magenta suspension has sufficient absorption to match the optical contrast of a conventional printer. And also it has the right spectral dependence, which is the strength of our technology because we can simply use the favorite pigments of printing industry and use them in our suspensions. On the same device, we've also measured reflectance as a function of viewing angle. And the setup is like this. We illuminate 
uh, device from the perpendicular direction with a collimated light source and we use an external Lambertian reflector and we measure the reflected light here as a function of the viewing angle. And in the compacted state we achieve a record-breaking 75% perpendicular reflectance and also with a very wide viewing angle because here at 45 degrees the reflectance is still 70%. And over the whole viewing angle, the contrast is very high, 25 to 1. And using that same in-plane electrophoretic technology, we've made this demonstrator. And we've shown it on last year's SID conference. The device consists of 100 by 100 pixels, controlled with a passive matrix. And as you can see, we can control the pixels uh, to 32 analog ray levels. Brightness, contrast and viewing angle are truly outstanding. And we had many enthusiastic reactions of people thinking that there was actually a backlight inside this device. So let me assure you, there is no backlight. This is purely reflecting ambient light, but in a very efficient way. Now let's have a look at the optical performance of various e-paper technologies. A standard metric also used in printing industry is the white reflectance at 45 degrees polar angle. So zero in, 45 out. And in this benchmark I make use of values that have been reported in literature for monochrome devices. For pneumatic liquid crystals, a highest reflectance of 20% is reported. And the reason for this low value is of course the polarization filter and the fact that the reflectance reduces quickly with viewing angle. For colosteric liquid crystals, the reflectance is slightly higher. But essentially, it, it has the same limitation. Uh, although there are no polarizers, the colosteric layers only reflect light of one polarization direction. The interferometric principle uses constructive interference in, um, in a cavity to reflect light. And although the reflectance of a single wavelength in the perpendicular direction can be very high, with the extension to a full spectrum and wide viewing angle, the reflection is much lower. For electro-wetting, a reflectance of 35% has been recently reported. However, this value may not be the upper limit of this technology. In fact, the previous speaker uh, measured 55 reflectance. But it would not be fair to include that number because it was not measured in the 0 to 45 configuration. And since that device contained a specular reflection, its viewing angle will not be very broad. And I suspect it will not be much better than 35. But nevertheless, I invite Professor Heikefeld's group to publish the 0 45 reflectance results and I gladly update my table. Next, the electrochromic. Uh, for this, 45% reflectance has been reported. And electrodeposition, which is a related technology, but uses metals instead of dyes. And for this technology, recently 60% has been reported with 20 to 1 contrast. Finally, the electrophoretic e-paper technologies. For conventional e-paper, 36% reflectance has been reported. And today, in this work, on an in-plane electrophoresis, I add 70% with 25 to 1 contrast for the white reflectance at 45 degrees. So in conclusion, in-plane electrophoresis shows the best optical performance among all e-paper technologies.